Good morning and welcome to Coffee Pot Bible Fellowship, Cheyenne, Wyoming, and Sap Brothers Truck Stop. And unfortunately, for those of you who are watching this now, I'm sure you've noticed that we don't didn't we did not have a live stream. Facebook is uh, having some issues, so we're going to record this and upload it afterwards. So we are going to start with a hymn this morning as soon as we're ready. Come on, you, you only oh, have two jobs to do. Oh, I got three. Good, that's okay. I got it. Um, and you're going to have to. Okay. Hold on. 607, close to B. Yeah. Except. Run the slides. Awesome. Ready? Get to your turn, Mel. Uh, technical difficulties are so fun. Six oh seven. So I we're gonna start. IT guys would be unemployed if it weren't for them. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna start with number six hundred and seven, close to thee. your prayer request let us know if you prefer they be announced or not and uh, one thing we do have on our prayer list for today is uh, Sat Brothers is doing their driver appreciation week from August 24th to 27th and here at the chapel we're going to continue it one more day on to the 28th and uh, we'll announce more of what's going on that day as we uh, get things nailed down now they're not we're still praying for the Tweedy family and uh, for the things they're going through in, over there in Alaska and also for our drivers and their families so if you'll join me for a word of prayer this morning Lord thank you for this day that you've given us um, be with all of our drivers out there in the roads Lord keep them safe keep their they keep their uh, loads going smooth Lord and uh, we pray for the Tweedy family um, for all the things that they're going through lord give them strength and we pray for the uh, upcoming driver appreciation day that uh, your will be done we'll have people here and uh, your name will be praised throughout that day lord and pray for the message today that people will have open hearts to receive the message and it will work uh, work what it needs to work in someone's life today lord in jesus name amen Next we are 747, Sunshine in My Soul. Oh, 
message today. Doesn't get up out of the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. We're going to be going today to 1 Peter chapter 3. We're going to begin in verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verses 12 through 18. Give everybody a minute to turn there. It's taken us a couple years to get this far through First <laughs> Peter, but <laughs> that's okay. First Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you, if ye be followers of that which is good? But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of the terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a question or a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you of your good conversation in Christ. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened in the spirit. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity once again to gather together and worship your holy name, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you just guide me through this message today, Lord, that your, your message clearly comes through, that your will will be done, Lord. Just watch over and protect and give your guidance and direction in all of this. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Talk 
talking here about you know, God in our defense. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12 again starts out, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. This is an encouragement to the believers. We're to cheer up. Take courage. We have no need to fear. God is on our side. He's watching. The eyes of the Lord are on you. You can't hide. He has a special respect and affection for us. He sent his son in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves us so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross for us. That's a lot of love. That's a lot of affection. And if you would go that far, do you think he's going to abandon you now? No. He's there for us. He's listening. He hears our prayers. Psalms 10, 17 says, Lord, thou hast heard the, the desire of the humble. Thou wilt be pre pre prepare their heart. I can't even talk today. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. It says, God's going to listen to our prayers. The prayers of the faithful will always be heard. And we're not to be vengeful. Vengeance is his. For those that do, that do evil against us, it's his job. He'll deal with that. Romans 12, 18 and 19 says, If it be possible as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. We don't have to be vengeful. We don't have to go out there and strike back. God's going to take care of that for us. We are protected by God. It goes on to tell us that his face is against the evil. His anger will pursue them. He's everywhere. He's all-knowing. He is eternal. What that means is he is the great enemy of evil. His punishment is more severe than anything I can ever dish out to him. In addition to that, his punishment is more permanent than anything I can dish out to him. Mark 3.29 says, But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. That's within God's power, not mine. He's stronger than the evil. He is righteous. He cannot fail. He cannot condone evil. His goodness is not a preventative for the punishment, but it mandates that he punish evil. Moving on to verse 13. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? Vengeance is his. Don't be vengeful, don't be fearful, be prayerful, go boldly forward in his name. Because who can harm you? Your future is secure. We have salvation. Romans 10, 13 tells us, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not might be saved, it's not may be saved, it is 
they shall be saved. Your enemies, their future secure too. It's called damnation, it's called eternity in hell. John chapter 3, verses 17 to 20 tells us, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth not on him is or, excuse me, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. If they don't believe, they're already condemned, and it's for eternity. Moving on to verse 14. But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. You know, we can suffer for him. We've got a secure future. We'll get crowns and glory. We'll get more blessings. We'll have eternal happiness. Yeah. They can kill the body but they're powerless over our eternity. Not only that, but they're powerless over their eternity. It's in God's hands. Very true. Verse 15 tells us, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We're to sanctify the Lord. We're to worship Him, to obey Him, to serve Him, to pray to Him, to rely on Him, to trust Him, to draw others to Him. When we're out there in the public, we're supposed to be an advertisement for God. We're to let God's life, God's will shine through us. We're, we're to be ready to witness for him. When somebody comes up and says, why do you believe what you believe? Why do you live this life of cheerfulness and hope? Why don't these problems weigh you down? We're to be ready with an answer. We can give our testimony. Tell them how we came to know the Lord. We can give them reasons for our hope. That God has stepped in and God has taken care of these problems for us. We can use Romans Road or John 3.16 or the scriptures and show them the way to the Lord. But we also have to do it in meekness and humility. We're no better than them. We're lost sinners too, or weird yeah. sinners. We have been found. That's the only difference. And it wasn't anything I did. It was what God did. First Peter 3.16 says, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you, you accuse your good conversation in Christ. Having a good conscience and a good conversation. That's what we're supposed to do. Conscious. A conscience is to be pure. It's to be undefiled. Its purpose is to alert us of t trouble, alert us of evil alert us from any danger. Sin hardens our conscience. It creates a situation where the conscience fails to recognize the evil. It fails to warn us of the evil. Conversation is here in the scripture is not the, the, having a discussion with somebody, but the way you live your life. 
is to be a holy life. We're supposed to not just talk about how great God is and how much we believe in him. We're supposed to live it. We're supposed to walk the talk. We're supposed to set the example. They may speak evil of us, but you know, God knows all things. He knows the truth. And we hope that your testimony tells of your righteousness as well. If that's the case, you'll be blessed. They will be cursed. Moving on to verse 17. For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. You know, if you're doing the right thing and suffer for it, you're going to be blessed for that. God is going to appreciate that. You can stand on your own reputation. And you can stand on the word of God. And God will stand with you. But if you are punished, if you are persecuted, if you are suffering for your own actions, your own wrongdoing, evil has nothing to stand on. You have no support there. Verse 18 continues. For Christ also has suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Christ suffered for us. As it said in John 3.16, he sent his only begotten son to die for us on the cross. His only begotten son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us. The, su the just suffered for the unjust. The righteous suffered for the unrighteous. He was beaten. He was abused for us. Matthew 27, verse 27 to 31 tells us, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, King of the Jews, and they spit on him and they took the reed and smote him on the head and after they had mocked him they took the robe off of him put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him Jesus was abused for us they put him to death for us they crucified him Matthew 27, beginning in verse 35. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vestures did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there. And they set up over his head that his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on their right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him, with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. 
the thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Yeah, that. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, The man call us for Elias. And straight away one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Jesus died. He died not for anything he did, but for what we did. But the verse goes on. The verse also tells us that he was quickened. That means resurrection. Mark 16 verses 1 through 8 tells us, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And the very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came onto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun, and they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, and it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw the young man sitting on their right side, clothed in a long white raiment, garment. And they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth which was crucified. He's risen. He's not here. Behold, the place where he had laid. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto him, you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Jesus rose from the dead. It was a physical resurrection. He was gone from the tomb. He's alive. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 through 11 tells us, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. All you have to do is believe. There's no sin too great for Jesus. He paid the price for every one of them. Do you believe in the Lord today? I hope you do. If not, today can be the day. Because God is still in the saving business. If you want to talk about it, you can contact us here at the chapel. You can drop in, you can call, you can email, you can Facebook. Please, let us work with you today. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this message, Lord. We thank you for this blessed plan of salvation, Lord. We thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins, Lord, that we might know that plan of salvation. Lord, we ask that you be with each and every truck driver out there today, Lord, and anybody else listening in. Lord, just guide and direct, put your protective arms around them, Lord. Let your will be done. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray.
pellet. with Faith is the Victory, number 727. next week.